need haste After that, boy, I need grace I need bones, that's the way I need laws, break no break I am chosen, I am great After that, boy, I need space But I need space Shalom Israel, this is Bishop Nathaniel. The Israelites have been scattered across the four corners of the earth, as prophesied in Deuteronomy, the 20th chapter. Here in Israel, united in Christ, we need your help to recover the remnant of our people, teach them the gospel. Please help us, support us, and join or donate to the Booster Club today. Shalom. His, his, I don't think he's talking about himself. I don't think he's saying that he paying me above somebody else. Bro, he just said thou are a special people. Who is the thou? Thou. Who is the thou he's talking about? Thou, thou could be himself. So he's um, talking thou, about so, thou, so thou, you can be thou. God is a schizo. So, so God talking about us. So, we say so thou. God is a schizo. Is that no, what you're saying? No. We're not Egyptians. We don't share the same blood. We don't share nothing in common. We're different people. Okay, so they had us in slavery, and Moses was commissioned by the Lord to come take us out of slavery to lead us to another land. All right, this is the book of Exodus, chapter 12, and verse 19. Seven days shall there be no leaven found in your houses, for whatsoever eateth that which is leavened, even thou so. Correction, even that soul shall be cut off from the congregation of Israel. So seven days is how long the Feast of Unleavened Bread lasts. So seven whole days. Uh, we actually start the days right. when the sun is down and there's no light in, in the air. That's when a day starts according to the Bible. So seven days, we should have no leaven. And leaven represents sin among us, all right? Right. So that's why we don't eat it for a whole seven days. It's a symbolic thing, okay? Like fast. Pardon me? Almost like fast. Yes, sir. Like, kind of like that. Yeah, exactly. Just you purge yourself for something for a certain amount of time. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. What's your other question? What's your other question? Yeah, I think, yeah, I asked how long it passed over the last. Okay. Seven days. Hey, give me uh, the difference between Egyptians and the Israelites and Exodus. All right, so I want to drive home the point that we're not the same people because this is a celebration of when the Most High God delivered us from the Egyptians. Now, a lot of people, like, they like to say we're comedic or we're uh, Africans or whatever the case may be with that, we're not the same people. We don't keep the same customs. We don't put plates in our lips. We don't uh, We don't cut ourselves. We don't drink uh, cow piss. We don't do none of, none of that kind of stuff. That's nasty, all right? This is the book of Exodus, chapter 11 and verse seven. But against any of the children of Israel shall not a dog move his tongue. So what it's telling you is, a dog can't move his tongue against us. Nobody should be able to speak against us. No, nobody should be able to come up against us as long as we have the power, which is the most high. As long as he's with us, nobody can do anything to us. We're going to be above all nations like I stated before. All right? Against man or beast. Not even, our, not even to our beast. They can't touch our stuff at all. Nobody can harm us according to this Bible. That ye may know that the Lord doth Put a difference between the Egyptians and Israel. It says that the Lord put a difference between us, between the Israelites and the Egyptians. Give me um, what is it where the uh the differences are? We came out of Egypt and we can't do the things of Egypt. Leviticus, yes, 18. That's what it is. Here's the, I'm gonna show you some differences between the Israelites and the Egyptians. All right. Once we came out from among the Egyptians, we were told not to be like the Egyptians, and this is the stuff they were doing. 
this is the book of Leviticus, chapter 18 and verse 1. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel. Speak to the children of Israel, like we said, talking to you. And say unto them, I am the Lord your God. After the doings of the land of Egypt, wherein ye dwelt, shall ye not do. So it's telling you, when we was in captivity, we were doing the things the Egyptians do. Like for example, if we, like when we came over here in slavery, we were doing everything that our master taught us to do. All right, we was going to Christian church on Sunday, you know, flipping and screaming and shouting in the churches. We learned all that from our oppressors, all right, because we had to learn all over again. Our, our nationality was taken from us, our language. So we had to learn from our enemy. Same thing that happened in Egypt, we had to learn everything from them, which was wickedness. I'm gonna, go, I'm gonna give you some of the laws, stuff they were doing that was wickedness according to the Most High. Verse 7, the nakedness of thy father or the nakedness of thy mother shalt thou not uncover. She is thy mother. Thou shalt not uncover her nakedness. Now, why is the Most High telling you that? That's what was happening in Egypt, all right? They were sleeping with their mothers. That's what's going on. You would go see your mom naked, it'd be no big deal. Or you probably hit your mom. All this wickedness was going on. Give me another one. Verse 18. Neither shalt thou take a wife to her sister to vex her, to uncover her nakedness beside the other in her lifetime. Right. And that's going into having two, two of these sisters together and using them against each other to, to vex them. Also goes into menage a trois. Right. That stuff is wickedness. All right, we were about one wife. We don't we don't do that two things. We don't do two wives or three wives. All right, Christ said Christ said one wife. All right, so these are the things that the Most High said that we are not to do because we learned that from our oppressors. Same thing today. The, the person tells you to go to church on Sunday and buy everything on Saturday, which is the Lord's Day. He tells you to celebrate their holidays. All right, can you find can you find a uh, Christmas or Thanksgiving, St. Patrick's Day, uh, Mother's Day, Father's Day, Easter? Can you find that in the Bible? So why do we go to church and we celebrate it? Well, you know what you can find in the Bible? Passover, which right. is this week. Right. You can find the Feast of Tabernacles. All right? You can find the Feast of Pentecost. All these things are your high holy days that the Lord gave to you. That's why we should be separate from everybody. Right. He divided us. He didn't want us to be like any other nation. That's what makes us special. All right? I'm going to give you another. I'm going to give you a commandment now. What you got? Yeah, get that, get that. Yeah. So, like I said, we're supposed to be separate. So, you're supposed to be different from everybody else. Now, the challenge to you is to come out from among these people. All right? These are your brothers, but right now they're sick. The Lord called you here today. There's no, there's a reason why you're here. That's right. You just didn't walk past for no reason because you just wanted to do it. The Most High said you're going to listen to these words that the Most High has coming out for you. Today is your time. I'm not no Christian pastor when I say that, but it's your time today. All right? This is the book of Leviticus. Chapter 20 and verse 26. And ye shall be holy unto me, for I, the Lord, am holy, and has severed you from you from other people. So the Most High God chose all of you to be separate from every other nation. Yes, and my brother, my brother right there, hey, come in real quick. Hey, come, come talk when you come out there, man. But he told you you're going to be different, okay? So you have to stand up and, and be different from everybody else to be an example. You're an older man, so if you come out and start keeping these laws, somebody that looks up to you is going to start doing it too. Right. Because you never know. There's always somebody watching you. I learned that when I was, uh, when I was younger. All right? You never know who's watching you, who uh, takes you as an idol, or that's not a good thing, but takes you as somebody to look up to to, to follow. Right. So if you come out and start keeping the laws, you're going to inspire somebody else to do the same thing. And once you do that, these neighborhoods will get cleaned up. Huh. Think about it. If everybody had his own wife and wouldn't deal with nobody else's woman, right. that's a lot of violence going on, right? A lot of violence. If, we, if I don't sell drugs to you, you can't be strung out to go steal, to go get some more drugs. Right. All right, you're not a thief. You don't need cops in your neighborhoods now. We stop, we stop breaking these laws. We don't need them to, to regulate what we do. Right. We have our own people. Right. All right, think about that. What you got? Uh, give me uh, Deuteronomy 28. Yeah. Go back to uh, 15. So the point is, bro, the reason why we're out here is to tell you that you had to keep the laws. The laws of God is what's going to get us out of this situation. 15. This 
That's the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28 and verse 15. But it shall come to pass, if thou will not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God. So if we don't listen, just like we said before, if you don't listen and apply these commandments, do what they say. To observe and to do all his commandments and his statutes, which I command thee this day, that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. So, what, what is that saying, brother? What is that telling you right there? Obedient to, Obedient to his words. All the commandments in his Bible we are supposed to follow. That's what's going to get us out of this condition. All right? So, I'm glad you're listening. Hopefully the Lord's going to let you hear this one right here. Yeah. This is the book of First Corinthians. Chapter 11 and verse 3. So right now we're going to go over the order. Because the most high is about order. Just like in your household, I suppose. Are you married? All right, okay. So you do you have kids? So there's, there you go. There's an order to it. So who's the head of the household? Is it 50%? Is it no, I don't know about that. Now there you go. It ain't no 50%. You the head honcho. That's right. You number one. All right. But I would have you know that the head of every man is Christ. So every man, meaning you, me, and all these brothers out here, our head would be Christ, okay? He's on top of us. We take, we follow his footsteps. We listen to what he said. And the head of the woman is man. So the head of the woman is the man. So that means you're supposed to rule over your wife. There's, no, there's not supposed to be a woman ruling over a man in a household or even in the church because they go hand in hand. And the head of Christ is God. So even Christ has the head. They're not the same person. Christ and, and the Most High God are not the same. There's order. It's God, Christ, man, then a woman. You understand that? All right, listen to this. Verse 4. Every man praying or prophesying, having his head covered, dishonoreth his head. Yeah, so the spirit of prophecy... It says, if any man prays a prophesy with his head covered, it's going to tell you what it is. But the spirit of prophecy is the word, the Most High God's words. Right. So anytime you read this Bible, it's going to let you know. This is the book of Revelation, chapter 19 and verse 10. And I fell at his feet to worship him. And he said unto me, see, that, see thou, do it not. I am th thy fellow servant. And of the brethren that have the testimony of Jesus, worship God. For the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. So anytime we bring out any laws, we're testifying to you. We're testifying of the prophecies of Jesus Christ. So what they're saying is, go back to uh, 11. So what they're saying is, anytime the word of God comes out, you should do what? But every... Correction, every man praying or prophesying, having his head covered, dishonoreth his head. So it says, if you have your head covered when the words of God are coming out, you dishonor your head, and your head is Christ. All right? So anytime we're preaching out this word or you're hearing it, what should your, what should your head be covered? All right. Are we preaching out the Bible? Yeah. Are you willing to take off your head? No, no. Yeah, I did. Take it off right now while we're going over scriptures. Oh, all praise to the Father. That, that's repentance. That's repentance. And the angels are rejoicing for a brother that repents. Let's get repentance real quick, uh, First Kings. Yeah. So the important part of repentance is acknowledging what you did wrong. Well, first you have to know what you did wrong. So that's why it's important to go over the laws. Like if I didn't know it was a, it was a, a sin to steal cars, I know now what should I do? Stop doing it. So it's all about knowing first. So once you learn these laws, then you can apply them and make you a better person. All right. The book of 1 Kings, chapter 8, verse 46. If they sin against thee, for there is no man that sinneth not, and thou be angry with them, and deliver them to the enemy. So that's saying, if we sin, the Most High is going to put us in captivity. He's going to put us under our enemies like we are today. All right. So that they carry them away captives unto the land of the enemy. Unto the land of the enemy, like, like he was talking about on these slave ships. We broke the laws of God, 
people came and conquered us and took us away from our homeland to another homeland. All right? Far or near. Far or near. Yet, if they shall bethink themselves. Yet, it's saying, but if you bethink yourselves, meaning, what did I do wrong? How did I get in this position? How can I get out of it? Yet, if they shall bethink themselves in the land whither they were carried captive. In this land which we were carried captive, meaning America for you, because our people are scattered all across the world. But more specifically, we're talking about in America. All right, we was carried captive over here in America, so what should we do? And repent! Repent. Like I said, what's repentance? What's the first thing you gotta do? Know what you're doing wrong. All right, so once you know, then you do what? Stop. You stop doing it, all praise to the Most High. And make supplication unto thee. Supplication means you, you really humble yourself. Not just saying, oh Lord, I, I messed up, I, I sinned. Okay, you know, forgive me. Throw up a Hail Mary. No, it means you, you constantly take, take the time to humble yourself and plead to the Most High God. Right. Because you have to understand we have no power without Him. Right. We can't move without Him. There's no way we got in this situation if we don't acknowledge who the Most High is and what He's done for us. And make supplication unto thee in the land of them that carried them captives, saying, we have sinned and have done perversely. We have committed wickedness. So you have to tell them. You have to sit there and tell the Most High, I'm sorry, Most High. I'm sorry, Lord, that I committed this, this, this evil, wicked act. I need to be better. How can I be better? Put the Spirit on me to be a better person so I can lead. And so we turn unto thee with all their heart, and with all their soul. So it's telling you with all your heart, meaning your, your mind. So it has to be a change of your mind. Not just talk. Like, I'm going to stop stealing. I'm going to stop committing adultery. No. When you say it, you have to do it. Because if I tell you, if I tell you, hey, man, I'm not going to steal for you today, and then I steal from you, what is my word worth? If I keep doing it every week, what is my word worth? So it's all about your actions. So it's telling you you have to, you have to change your actions. All right? That's how you show you love the Most High God, by repenting and coming back to the laws of God. And so return unto thee with all their heart and with all their soul in the land of their enemies, which led them away captive, and pray unto thee toward their land, which thou gavest unto their fathers, the city which thou hast chosen, and the house which I have built for thy name. All right, so that's where repentance is coming. Hey, hey, brother and sister, I'll come over here real quick. I'm going to show y'all someone this sign. Real, real quick. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. You got it? Okay, cool, cool. All right, so basically, basically we're the so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans. We're the Israelites according to the Bible. That's right. All right? So my brother, uh, you got a flyer? Yeah. I look at the information on there, man. We're looking forward to seeing you at the school. All right? The school is in Newport News. Can you make it? I don't know, but I might make a try. And you got to try all praises, man. And also with that, we have online classes so you can learn online if you can't make it. All right? Oh, right here. Hey, brother's over there. Hey, brother with the red shirt. Oh, we come out. All seven cities, yeah. Yeah, so. Right, definitely. Okay. Hey, brothers. I enjoy you. Hey, come real quick. I enjoy it. Hey, man, you make sure you look at that flyer, man, and watch okay. the online classes, man. Okay. Because, listen, before you go, give me a who will rise up for me. You have to be different from everybody else. Mm -hmm. All right? Now, these are my brothers right here. Right. But we all came from different walks of life. It wasn't like we all just woke up together and said, hey, let's go outside and put on these purple, purple garments and right. go out there and start screaming at people. Yeah. All right? We all came from different walks of life. The book of Psalms, chapter 94, verse 16. Who will rise up for me? against the evil doers. The Most High God is saying, who will rise up for me against the evil doers, all right? What is an evil doer? Someone that commits what? Oh, sin. There you go, and you know what sin is, right? right. Breaking the laws, Breaking. all right? So we have to come out from that. He's asking you, who will rise up for me? Right. Is it gonna be you? It's gonna be you? I like to hear it, keep going. Yeah. Or who will stand up for me against the workers of iniquity? That's right, you had to come out from among these people, man. All of us, we all had our groups that we used to hang with before we woke up. Right. You know what set us apart from them? We heard the, the call of the Most High God. Right. That's what makes us special. I came up from a group of a lot of people I knew I used to hang out with. Right. But what made me special is I woke up to what mo the Most High God says with no fear. I was able to say, I'm not going to celebrate what they celebrate anymore. Right. I'm not going to do what they do anymore. That's how you're special. Each, each one of these men that stand up here right now, they're special men, according right. to the Most High God.
And I believe that you are too because you're listening. You can hearken to the words of the Lord. So make sure you, make sure you uh. I'll check it out. Yeah. Yeah. Second Corinthians chapter six and verse seventeen. Wherefore come out from among them and be ye separate. Separate. You have to be separate from everything that's going on out here. Right. All right. You're different. You see all these, see these women out here, these little girls out here half naked. Yeah. Come out from among them. You should be telling these girls, cover yourselves up. We have pedophiles out here. Yeah. That's the true thing in our neighborhood. Yeah. We got people selling drugs. You, you shouldn't be a part of that. Right. Stand up. Let them know we ain't going to accept that no more. If, if most of these people in these neighborhoods say we're not going to accept these drugs in our neighborhood, it has to stop. Right. It has to stop. All right, but you have to be that one to lead them. Okay. All right, right. Hey, brothers, y'all come over here real quick. I see what you're saying. Y'all come over here. Coming, hey, y'all know we teach teaching. Come, 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 come on right here. Come on right here. I can hear you from way down there. Oh, good, good. I'm gonna show y'all something real quick. I'm gonna show y'all something real quick. Look at this. Speak by you real quick. Y'all see the sign right here? On the left side, on the, on the right side. Yeah. Come here. You know who you are on this sign? What, what tribe you from? I'm from. Come look real quick. I got you. Tribe. Are you are you a so-called American black? No, no. This is. Are my you tribe. a so-called no. West Indian or no, this is my tribe a Jamaican? Right I'm gonna tell you before you do all that. Ain't none of that me. What, so what's ain't your nationality? None of that me, huh? what's, what's your nationality? I'm an African man. I'm black. Okay, so so you're black. Yeah. All right, so let me. Folks. So you're the color of that jersey? Uh, no. Put your arm out real quick. No. This brown, uh, uh, that's brown. So, so you're not black, right? No. Right, you just I mean, say you're black. black. Oh, hey, come here, hey, brother. Hey, look. How can uh, so you look, tell me I ain't put your black. arm out. Put your arm out real quick. Me come here. Me and your opinion. What color am I? I'm oh, telling you, look, you're not black. Look, look, look. No, I'm not black. So, so why would you say you're black? That's what I'm asking. Why would I say I was black? Yeah, why would you? Because when the sex album came on my mama's womb, that's where I was. Is it right? Well, let me ask you this. I'm asking. Hold up. I got you. That's good. No, I mean, but I'm gonna say it. I'm listening. You can I ask you a question? Go ahead, bro. Came on your mama's womb. Right? Yes, sir. So you never, as you got to talk, you never say you black? I've never called myself black when I came out of my mother's womb, never. What I mean by that? I wasn't talking. That's when you came out, not when you came out. No, I'm just saying, when, when I grew up, yeah. Speak. Well, I'm gonna let you know, I'm not lying to you, I was never uh, taught I was black. Did you? No, I ain't say no, no, that's I'm it. Yeah. taught. Yeah. I ain't say taught. You said that I say it? When you came up and got to the age of a little boy. Yes, sir. Hey, you see yourself say, no, sir. I said I was African American. I did say that. I never called myself black. But that's beside the point. But check this out, bro. So what's your? What, so you say you're African American, right? And this what we on. So are you an African American? Do y'all know where the word African American comes from? No, we don't, brother. All right, good, good, good. So African comes from the from the uh, explorer Leo Scipio Africanus. Okay. He's a he's a so-called white man that conquered the yeah, continent of Africa. Yeah, yeah. All right? right. So who is where does the word America come from? Yeah. A man named Americo Vespucci. Americo Vespucci. Vespucci. I remember that. Now, now what is he? What nationality is he? Is he a so-called black man? No, he's not. Is he a so-called Mexican? He's a white man, right? right. So you have two white That's men. What I've you have the name of two white men over you. Now, if you put two white men together, can they have children? No, that's homosexuality. Absolutely. So who are you then? We don't know, right? Well, It'd be nice. That's it. Yeah. So that's all I'm saying because we were taught that we was Amer African American by our enemy. Yeah. So real quick, the word Africa, the word Africa comes from a man named uh, Afri uh, Leo Scipio Africanus. He was a European, a white man that conquered the land of Africa, right? So he's a white man. So let's go to America. Where's the word America come from? He's a, he's a European conqueror named uh, Leo Scipio Africa, no, I'm sorry, uh, Americo Vespucci, another white man. So you have the title of two white men over you saying that you're African American. That's not true though, because two white men can't produce a child, all right? So let me tell you who you are. This is according to the Bible because all of the knowledge comes out of the Bible. Be right? me something right now. Oh, praise you, good, good. Read it real quick. The book of Isaiah, chapter one and verse three. The ox knoweth his owner. And the ass, his master's crib. So the ox and the ass are two strong animals, all right? But they're not smart. They're, they're known to be like not smart animals. It's like, what was it? Bronze over brains kind of thing, okay? They're known to be strong. Right. But keep going. But Israel does not know. My people does not consider. So it's telling you, even though they're dumb animals, they know how to get back to their home, all right? So if they go out a far distance and you leave them, they can come all the way back. They have the knowledge to come all the way back home to who their master is, to who they know. 
that created us. But us being a people, we don't know who we are. Just like when I asked you, you said you was black, African American, which is which is common. I call myself African American. Some people will call, hey sis, come over here real quick. I'm gonna show you something. So a lot of our people call ourselves we call ourselves Kemet, all right? But according to the Bible, according to the most high God, he's telling you that you're Israelite, which is the best thing ever. Go to uh, seven and six Deuteronomy. I'm gonna tell you why it's the best thing ever. All right? Because God doesn't love everybody. I keep saying it out here. That's, I love saying it though. God doesn't love everybody. He don't treat every... I'm going to show you why. I'm show you. Deuteronomy chapter 7 and verse 6. For thou art in holy people unto the Lord thy God. So right now, the Most High God is speaking to all these people on this side. Only to them, which is the so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans. He's only speaking to them. All right? Read from the top. For thou art in holy people unto the Lord thy God. The Lord thy God hath chosen thee to be a special people unto himself. So he called you holy and called you a special people, meaning you're separate from everybody else. Like, do you have a favorite pair of shoes or a favorite outfit that you like to wear or something that you prefer over other things, right? Same way, there's 18 nations in the Bible. The Most High God chose these people, which you're on it. He chose you over every other nation. That's Just like those people in there, who owns that store? Arab man, what is he? Arab, <laughs> Arab, right? One of them. It don't matter. That's what they are. He chose you over him. Right. He says you're better than them. That's right. All right, check this out. Okay. Above all people that are upon the face of the earth. Hold on, God did not just say that. Cause when I went to church, I learned that God loves everybody. Read it again. Read it again. Above all people that are upon the face of the earth. Now, since did God say that you was equal to everybody on the face of the earth? You said, he said, he said, yes, read it again. Uh -huh. Above all people that are upon the face of the earth. What did that just say? Did it say uh, above or did it say equal to? Above. He said you, look, listen, it's you. No, it's me again. All right, read from the top. Well, listen carefully, because he's talking to these people on this side, the uh, Israelites. Oh, 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 yeah. Verse six, yeah. for thou art in holy people unto the Lord thy God. The Lord thy God hath chosen thee to be a special people unto himself above all people that are upon the face of the earth. What did I just say? Hold on, you saying but? but what did it say? I, I, I got kept read that again. I'm gonna stop you on Oh, that's good. Oh, go ahead, let's go. Read that on the ground. Read that on the ground, man. You don't need that mess, man. Go ahead, sit down. Read it over again. I gotta stop. One. Yeah, go ahead, go ahead. Verse six. For thou art in holy people unto the Lord thy God. The Lord thy God hath chosen thee to be a special people. Unto himself. What? Unto himself? That means he took you and took you away from everybody else. We're his special people. You're his. The other nations don't belong. Unto his self. Unto himself. Stop him right there. Go ahead, go ahead. Unto himself. Above all people that are upon the face of the earth. What that mean to you? Hey, sis, come here. I'm going to show you sound real quick. I'm thinking I think he's saying that. You won't be on camera. I got you. No, it's not that. Oh. His, I think he's talking about himself. I don't think he's saying that he put me above somebody else. Bro, it just said thou are a special people. Who is the thou? Thou. Who is the thou he's talking about? Thou, thou could be himself. Gentlemen, what brings me to my next point? Don't smoke crack. So he's um, talking thou, about so, thou, so you can be thou. God is a schizo. So, so God talking about us. So, we say so thou. God is a schizo. Is that no, what you're saying? No, no. So he had, when he say a thou, what, what that mean to you? Cool, Who he talking about? Cool, when he say a thou. He's talking about these people. All right. But we're gonna go on. We're gonna show you something else. Go to Deuteronomy 28. We're gonna show that you're a child. You don't want to believe that you're Israelite, no, but we're gonna. I mean, we hey. I can't. The book I can't, of Deuteronomy chapter 32 and verse 8. When the Most High divided to the nations their inheritance. Read that again. When the Most High God. divided to the nations. How, it said to the nations. How many nations are there? There's 18 nations according to the. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Listen. It's 18 nations according to the Bible, right? Read from the top. When the Most High divided to the nations their inheritance. So he divided to the nations. All 18 nations are going to get an inheritance, right? Listen to that. When he separated. The sons of Adam. So the sons of Adam are, are talking about the 18 nations. He separated us. We're not supposed to be all together. We're not supposed to be with them. They're not supposed to be with us. All right? Our people are supposed to be with our people. Their people are supposed to be with their people. 
going. He set the bounds of the people according to the number of the children of Israel. So the bounds of the nations were set according to the children of Israel because we was we were we're supposed to rule this world. Everything's supposed to go through us. We used to scream black power while Haram was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold. From Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone. 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are our men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. IUIC, we deliver the truth.